Hey everybody, welcome. It's Andrew Ains with Golf Academy and as always a very warm welcome and thanks for checking out the video today. You're very welcome to be here with me. So, final video to do on the latest Mizuno 919 um, range that's been launched. We've had the Hot Metal, uh, we've had the JPX 919 Forge, nice set of those sat here. And sitting next to them on the left hand side, we have the beautiful set of 919 Tour Irons, which has replaced the previous 900 Tours, which um, it's an interesting little bit of marketing, wasn't it? Which uh, Mizuno came up with. The Irons that won the 19, uh, 2017 US Open, and uh, they, they weren't allowed to use Brooks Kepka's name in their marketing. Um, although everyone kind of knew that since then he's obviously gone on to win the, the 2018 US Open and the US PJ. Um, and Kepka's had a huge influence apparently on the design of this 919 Tour I, and he's been a lot of input from him. Obviously, it was tremendously successful with the 900, but Mizuno think that they've moved it up another notch or two with this new 919. And looking at the number of tour players who are choosing to play this club by choice, not by getting paid lots of money, I think they've got it right. So Mizuno on tour with their irons at the moment are flying very, very high. Let's consult the, the book of everything and tell you a little bit about the, uh, the 919 tours. So this is all coming off the Mizuno website. So I always say this, if you want to get all the spec, just jump on there and, and have a read of it yourself. But I've just kind of, you know, edited this down to give you a little potted sort of um, little spec of this club. So we've got shop makers profile which satisfies elite shop makers and that's interesting marketing speakers saying probably will appeal to better players isn't it? They never really want to pin down who should be using this club but uh, this is where I, I get all sorts of comments coming back at me, you know, when I make this day. But, I, you know, I'm always honest with you people who watch my videos. If you play off a 28 handicap and you struggle with ball striking and you find golf an incredibly difficult game, there's a pretty good chance this isn't the club you should be using because the amount of forgiveness you're going to get in a club like this is very small and the sweet spot's also very small. I'm not going to pigeonhole it to say you've got to be a single figure player because as again, as I've said before, I teach golfers who are mid teen handicappers, great ball strikers, want to become better ball strikers. Can this club style of club make you a better ball striker? Probably. I'm not going to say it is for sure, but it could well do. So let's not get into that argument. But if you want to comment down below, you're very welcome. Um, stability frame, what does this mean? Stability frame means it's a little bit more open at the heel. So if we look at the club here, you can see how the club sort of opens up a little bit more in the heel. And the idea here is to enhance stability and launch is what they're saying. Tour grind top edge, we'll give you some little close-ups of this so you can see the top edge. The top edge has been narrowed to match the grinds which are commonly seen on tour. Um, we've got this pearl brush finish which is more durable than the previous finish and it also reduces glare. Okay, So if you're playing in very sunny conditions all the time then you're going to get less glare. And it is a very attractive finish, it really does look very premium. We've got the standard grain flow HD high density material. Uh, this is uh, made from a 1025E mild carbon steel billet and it actually just is a billet of steel which is hammered out in this process and then ground and shaped. A lot of craftsmanship goes into this club. Um, 34 degrees of loft on the 7 iron. That loft hasn't changed from the previous set as far as I'm aware. That gives us 46 degrees on the pitching wedge. So what we would call, I would call players lofts, you know, honest lofts. They're not cranking these up. Obviously you can have these lofts strengthened if you want to, but 34 is where a lot of the tour pros like to use it. 37 inches long. Um, price wise is premium because these are effectively a lot of this is handcrafted um, you're going to be paying in my shop right here at the moment if you walked in and buy a set and if you want to come and buy them come and buy them um, for the pitching wedge 899 pounds we'll give you a little conversion of that into dollars 
Um, so you can have a little look at that. So expensive, but it's a premium product. Um, custom fit, which we'll talk about next door a little bit. You can have any shaft, any grip option, doesn't matter if it's steel, graphite, whatever. Uh, and there's lots of choices. And again, you can find out what shafts are available on the Mizuno website. I suppose the only negative thing I can say, doesn't worry me personally, but it's gonna worry some people out there. Poor old lefties out there can't get it not available in left hand I'm afraid so um, I do feel sorry for left-handed golfers I know that they're in the minority but that's not for me to think that they should be punished in a way that they can't get their hands on this um, so I do feel sorry for you lefties and I sympathize if you did want a set of these well you can't get them simple as that so that's maybe something that Mizuno may be addressing in the future. Enough of me gabbling on. Should we go next door into the hitting area, hit some balls with this beautiful club? Come on, follow me next door and we'll go and whack some. Okay, everybody, we've made it into the hitting area. Time to put the 919 Tour through its paces. I've got Callaway Chrome Soft Balls down on the deck as usual. I've got an NS Pro Modus Tour 105 in stiff shaft. Um, I'm just gonna dive right in and hit a couple. Gonna play for a couple of customary draws to start with. Oh, that's gonna have to, oh, it's coming back. I saved that one just at the last minute. Could be quite good. Get in! Oh, it's a big slingshot draw this is. Um, this way, I'm gonna do something this way. I'm gonna do a little bit of work on my own swing this winter, which should be amusing, because I don't play a lot of golf these days, but um, well, that's for another video. But there's my big slingshot draw, which is, a shot I hate personally for me, but it kind of works. So, you know, I've got at that so much from behind and got the club face releasing quite aggressively, but it's, it kind of works. Carry distance 180, uh, 157, 187, that'll be the day. Um, coming from only 83 miles an hour club speed, about a 20 degree launch angle, not particularly high spin, 53, 25, but you know, enough spin to, to stop the ball. Let's see what we can produce this time. I'm going for my, this'll make you smile. I'm going for my fade swing this time. Stance opening up. I'm gonna try and swing it a little bit more out to in. See if we can make one move left to right. Oh, come on. <laughs> that's, that's my attempt of a fade. Pathetic, isn't it? Picked up left edge of the green. Uh, let's have a little look at it. I know you like to see me fail and struggle. I don't mind sharing my embarrassment with you. Um, 84 miles an hour club speed, 21 and a half degrees launch angle. Delivered a little bit more loft to the ball there. So we've got more backspin. Backspin's up to 6,000 just over. Carry distance stayed pretty good at 157. Um, I wonder if you can hit the most difficult shot in golf i.e. a reasonably straight one. I've got to say, just, you know, the feel off this club, it does feel soft. I'm not going to say the word buttery. We're not saying that word. Don't mention the word buttery. I hate that term, buttery soft. It just feels soft. The ball off the club face, yeah. It's what you'd expect from this iron. Okay, let's go again. That's pretty good, pretty good. Pulled it a fraction, probably about 15, 16 feet left of the flag. Carry distance again, a little bit inflated because I'm just closing the club face down a little bit, producing this slight overdraw. Um, spin rate just under 6,000, 58, 65. Club speed staying fairly stable at 84. Carry distance 159. Ah, I could, I could hit this club all day. It's just a beautiful golf club. It's a player's club. It's, it's something which you're definitely going to be able to shape the ball with, move it around. You can feel it's very, very receptive. You know, you can see strike marks here. You know, although I struggle to control where the ball's going sometimes, I don't know if this camera's going to actually focus here but the strike marks are there you know my strike marks are pretty consistent can't always control club face but I can still get the ball at the middle of the club and it just feels super soft 
It's a beautiful golf club. It's not for everybody, but you can see why some of the best players in the world want to put this club in their bag. It's the Mizuno 919 Tour. Anyone's hit this yet? Anyone thinking about buying it? Love to know your thoughts on it. It's what we'd expect from Mizuno, quality. Quality, quality, quality. Um, post your comments down below. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Give me a thumbs up if you'd like to support the channel. Um, I'll be back soon with some more videos. Thanks for watching and goodbye for now.